<laughs> it was kind of surreal. Uh, it's funny because I was telling Chuck that I feel like all my favorite records are coming to life. You know, because I have like an incredibly large record collection, I, and I know every one of these bands that's and, and the groups that's been up there uh, intimately from. I have probably have all their collections, and uh, just to be on stage was like it was it was it was it was really surreal for me because it was like my like I said before my collection just came to life, and and being here was like you know like we never thought that we would ever be in this level. Because you know when we when we started to do PE was a, it was basically for me it was an experiment, just to see how much we can inject some kind of inspiration, and and give meaning back to the community, and to see how it's been internalized, and not only that but been internalized throughout the entire planet, and I think that you know I mean to the point where we have a black president today, which we that's, for us it was kind of like a joke, you know. And to be able to have that today is, is, to me, is testament of the message, the spirit. And I think that that's the area that Public Enemy has been underrated in. Can you talk a little bit more about that? that you feel like Public Enemy has been uh, underrated how? Like, not well, underrated. Well, I, I think that you know, everybody loves the group for its musical contributions. I think they love what you know, Chuck's message and, and things of that nature, and flavors, antics, and Terminator and Lord, everybody. I think that everybody understands that part of it. But I think that the biggest part of it was a collective unit coming together. And I think that that, that was something that was really never done in the music business. Because when we first signed the Def Jam, Rick did not even understand, or Russell did not understand the use of what flavor was. He wasn't a rap rapper. He wasn't, he wasn't an intricate part. He, didn't, he wasn't a DJ. He, and it, he felt like he wasn't an intricate part of the unit. But his, his presence was so important. His spirit was so important. And, and what it does is it balances out Chuck's hard, aggressive message. And the beautiful thing about Flavor, you know, and, and one of the things, me being in the studio, is I, I crafted the sound. So the, the one thing that I've always loved about, you know, having Chuck and Flav together is having them to the point where when you listen to Chuck solo, he sounds one way. You listen to Flavor, he sounds another way. But when you put them two together, they create a chord. And that chord heightens the intensity of, of the choruses. So I think that when you hear Chuck and Flav together, they, 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 they ring, they register at, 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 a, at, a, at a whole nother frequency. And I, and I think that the, that the message that Flavor brings to the table, and a lot of people, here's, here's where Flavor gets under, as estimated. What he brings to the table is he brings release. Chuck brings pressure. He brings release. And I think that that combination is something that made people like fell in love with being able to listen to them over and over again for a lot of records. You know, I must say I'm not that familiar, but um, um, I, I guess from the new m music today, I think that the music music is great. I think that a lot of things that the kid that everybody's missing today is the fact that we used to sit around and talk about music. I mean, we would sit with LL Cool J, Run DMC, Stetsasonic, Heavy D. I can go on for days. All the rappers, we would just stand around, and and producers would sit for hours talking about music, talking about beats, talking about rhymes, talking about lyrics. You know, talking about why the you know what the story was about on this particular record. When you add all those things together, it, it kind of like teaches you about music. And we used to teach each other about music. And so what happens today is that you don't have that anymore. Everybody's isolated on their own computers, making their own music in their own world. And so what, what you don't have is that collaboration, that collective effort. And we even brought that into the studio. So the studio was basically, when you hear when you, all the stuff that you hear in those records, that's a, it's basically an argument. Everybody's fighting for attention to get their particular sound or whatever it is that they want to contribute to the record across. And everything has to come across my desk. If it doesn't, if it doesn't move me and it doesn't, make, doesn't feel like it's an integral part of the, the song and the development of the character of what we're trying to build, it doesn't exist. So therefore, everybody's trying to fight to get that, that attention to be on. And so what you hear is that, is that collaborative effort that happens after the fact, that reverberation that comes after you see all this all this energy that's being
tossed and thrown together, and then what what comes off after is that's what that's what I was looking for. 